Hello, it's Monday the 17th of August. I'm Rob Watson. Um, I'm sitting out uh, in what's actually a, ra uh, a rainstorm at the moment. So there's a bit of thunder. Um, but I thought I'd come out for some fresh air. Um, yesterday was like a, a totally grey day. It was like battleship grey skies. Uh, it was mild. Uh, and there was lots of rain, so it kind of rained quite heavily. Uh, and I think that's going to be the continuing pattern all week. But I was ever <coughs> moaning about the weather is not what I'm here for. What I want to do is just talk through some issues and ideas uh, that I've been writing about, and I posted up as a, a vlog today, uh, a blog uh, earlier, um, which is to do with the idea of the kind of level of social change that we're going through at the moment and what it means uh, and how we respond to it and one of my observations at the moment is that there are lots of people on Twitter and I follow a lot of people on Twitter from think tanks and policy proposal people um, who are very active at the moment and everybody's coming up with solutions about how we deal with a post-pandemic world. The, how do we build back better is one of the common themes and what are the social democratic principles that underpin that and it's incredibly important that we do this and we have this kind of discussion but I just kind of want to uh, the thought that's going through my mind is that there's a hint of caution is that we can be too quick to prescribe uh, and state what we think are positions should be and ought to be yeah we can talk, i think we can talk about the values that inform uh, the kind of change that we want to see and the kind of model of change that we think needs to be supported and nurtured in the future but to have a prescriptive list because the danger is that it becomes position taking and it becomes really a form of um you know it's like a kind of you state how you know it's you, you state what it is that you know and you expect other people to fall in line with that and what it doesn't do is open up spaces for deliberation and it doesn't open up spaces for us to consider what we don't know and what we are unsure about and where we might not be certain about what our responses should be so I've been wondering about thinking about these things as you do listening to podcasts reading books um, watching things on, uh, you know, on, online, reading newspaper articles and use my eyes as I've walked around Leicester in terms of interacting with people. And so I'm, I'm not as certain as, as most people and I'm happy to, to say I'm not certain and I think I would encourage more people to open up uh, some gaps and some spaces for uncertainty because I'm not sure that what we will put in place now will be what will endure in the future and that we really need to be considering different ways and different models of engagement and different models of develop processes of uh, political, economic, civic engagement and development that kind of take us into some new territories. So it's very, at the moment it feels to me as if it's very externalised. The whole problem, and my problem, uh, my my. my personal issue is I've tried to internalise this and I've been trying to resolve uh, some tensions within myself about my level of social tolerance. I regard myself as quite a progressive, liberal, open-minded, socially democratic kind of person and yet the lockdown and the pandemic has brought out my shadow side and has pressed my buttons in many ways that really kind of get me thinking that you know it would be easy to draw be drawn down a path which is uh, chauvinistic which would be xenophobic which would blame people uh, which would uh, lack any kind of personal social responsibility myself um, and expectations of that responsibility from people around me and the, the environment in which I live um, but at the same time there are clearly some things that are um, falling apart in front of our eyes. Our social cohesion is being stretched and it is thin. Um, and you know, what do we look for? What, what would be the sign of a socially cohesive society? I think that's the kind of conversation that we need to 
find a space, a non-judgmental, a safe space for people to have these kind of discussions. And yeah, I have my issues, noise, um, uh, excessive car congestion, uh, bad driving, um, people not wearing masks um, in shops, uh, not wearing masks in concentrated areas in the city centre, uh, not socially distancing, despite all of the, you know, the, 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 what's been going on and the information that people have to hand, is that people aren't being visibly shown the signs of social solidarity in a way that they otherwise might. And then there's also the clear indications, and this is nothing new, this has been happening for a few years now, um, which is caused by the, the kind of austerity agenda, which is, you know, kind of vagrancy, um, destitution, people living on the streets, um, huge numbers of people who are clearly intoxicated and affected by drugs, and the lack, if you like, of immediate social services support to tackle and to deal with that those the victims of the uh, the people who are pushed to the margins and then there's all the people that we we don't see or don't hear about um which you know aren't so visible um and to ignore them and to kind of um deny that these problems exist seems to me to be more of of a crime and to to bury your head in the sand um and it is uncomfortable, and I, I admit my social response to these things is is lacks empathy, and lacks understanding, um, and it lacks, uh, it, you know, it's it's you end up in a situation where you're guarding yourself, where you're protecting yourself before you can then um, reach out to help other people. Now, my belief is that these situations need to be dealt with through proper taxation, through proper financial support for strategic authorities that are enabled in law to deal with these issues so that's the police that's social services that's you know all sorts of kind of you know, above the line agencies uh, that should be uh, focused on these problems and we've demonstrated with the lockdown that these problems can be dealt with if you want to get rid of, you know, get rid that's the, that's the kind of language that uh, uh, seeps in if you want to uh, find a place for people to live that you know not on the street all it took was a government to turn around and say to local authorities spend the money you know book hotels book bed and breakfasts it's a short-term solution and we need to be thinking in terms of long-term solutions but there's also you know there's a kind of second layer of antisocial behavior which is a kind of you know the kind of british recourse to boisterousness you know that every you know the kind of expectation that everybody likes a drink uh that you know the 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 one thing that you don't do is stop people going to the pub and that people can behave and act in whatever manner they wish once they're intoxicated um i mean to the point where the the Leicester bid which is a business improvement district is lauding uh its initiative to have um ambulances paid for to support the nighttime economy and I, I just I frankly regard that as bizarre that if you have to have police and ambulances paid uh, additional police and ambulances paid for to support people to come into town on a Saturday night then something is wrong with the model and there's a kind of denialism and we normalize these kind of levels of antisocial behavior now, I don't want to come across, which I'm sure I have, and I do, and I will continue to do, as some kind of a, you know, a, a, a Daily Mail reading, uh, you know, kind of nimby and kind of, you know, rattling the, the, the neck curtains and get off my drive and all that kind of stuff. I, I, that's not who I am and what I want to, I, what I aspire to. But we need to find a space to have an argument and a discussion about the politics of civic responsibility about how people conduct themselves with one another where the responsibility lies uh, for your own well-being where your own responsibility lies for your health um, it, it shouldn't it can't just be foisted onto the individual as if you're expected to um, just manage yourself and if you get it wrong you're a loser you know all this stuff that the kind of the neoliberal corporate liberal 
uh, you know, kind of economic model, you know, winners and losers, as, as foisted on people in the last uh, 40 years. You know, that's part of the problem. We need to change that. So there needs to be, you won't get people to change and you won't get people to act in a more socially, civically responsible way without putting the infrastructure in place to deal with that. So it's in a way, it's like, wh how do we do this? What are, the, what are the kinds of conversations that we need to foster that will demonstrate and show how and in what way people can get along with each other and manage those differences and those anxieties and not just kind of bottle them up inside themselves? You know, I'm, I'm very aware that that's something that I... Uh, ha have a tendency to do and I'm trying to find a creative outlook and I find doing the, the writing in the blogs and these vlogs is a, a useful way of me to kind of get it out of my system but it's a bit of a moan rather than a creative response and I want to see if I can push this and develop this in a way which is a little bit more uh, creative and offers some solutions and one of the things I think are that what I'm kind of leading to with this is that there needs to be a psychological element to this uh, where we are, you know, our psyche is, another word for psyche is soul and our soul is depleted, our souls are deple depleted. I, I, I'm not religious, I'm not a person of faith but I do value the human soul, that thing that makes us unique as individuals. We bring our gifts to the world and to each other um, if, if we have the space to, uh, to, to demonstrate them. And we need to create more spaces and more opportunities for people to share and to open up about what they see as would be uh, the good life uh, that they've worked through themselves and with each other, um, not following a script that was laid down thousands of years ago but something which is relevant to today's society which is increasingly globalized which is increasingly information driven uh, which is increasingly you know uh, there is a mass production element to this there's a media element to this uh, there's a, a situation which we have to make and renew ourselves for and i think the danger is with a lot of the kind of think tank position taken that I see on Twitter is that we're not creating that psychic that, that space for our soul um, within these these prescriptive lists and I'd just caution that we should hold back a bit and just look at what's important and what we value so we have the climate crisis to deal with uh, we will have um, in changes to employment and wealth distribution because of automation and uh, uh, distribution we've got geopolitical power balances happening at the same time and are we going to expect the, the the political project to follow from these external um, changes and movement in history or are we going to look to an internal response and this is why I kind of um, I'm intrigued by you know, uh, uh, the work of Carl Jung because it suggests that we need to look within ourselves and one of the things to do is perhaps to just quieten things down and, and create a space where we are uh, able to let these thoughts and ideas come to the fore and to engage in shared collective creative practices that give us a sign and an indication of where they might go. Um, so this is the kind of uh, uh, work I'm going to try and get doing uh, in addition to the kind of community media work that I do as well. So I'm going to try and um, write on a regular basis because I've kind of struggled in a way to come up with, you know, to imitate what other policy development people do. Um, whereas actually I should just kind of share what my own thoughts and ideas are and use my own experience as well. Uh, so it's it's not going to be uh, uh, it's it's a work in progress let's put it that way i'm not one to have fixed affirmed positions about things we must do this and we must be, do that but i am interested in the process that we use to motivate change and i think if we think about that what the process is for motivating change then we can start to make change which is much longer lasting and it, which is much more uh, focused on enriching a sense of development rather than just transplanting us into a new set of problems.
Anyway, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, the rain looks like it might go off in a few minutes. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm on Twitter and Instagram uh, at Rob W Media, and the website is robwatermedia.net. Uh, any thoughts and ideas? I tend to kind of group this now under the banner of metamodernism, um, which is um, another idea of the meaning crisis and, and how we can respond to that without resorting to technical or ideological responses but we can bring in issues to do with personal development learning um soulfulness uh, creativity those kind of practices so anyway until next time uh, speak to you soon <laughs>